Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. And today I have a package, specifically a dodgy looking package. Yes, that's right, it came from eBay. And allegedly, it is a broken motherboard. I say allegedly, because I have reason to believe that it's actually not a broken motherboard. So today I'm gonna be trying to test it out and see if it still works, and then I'm gonna list it on eBay. The eBay listing will be below. Because I really hate hardware going to waste just because people think it's broken, when it probably isn't. So let's jump into the opening. Okay, so here's the box. Now the box is pretty standard, fragile sticker. I've covered my address because I don't want to release that. And it's covered in a bit of sticky tape. Now, when we open the box, I'm happy, I'm very happy. Bubble wrap, very good, keeps it from breaking. And an anti-static bag to keep the motherboard in. Now first impressions, the bag doesn't match the motherboard brand, but that doesn't matter, I'm not fussed. It just means that they're more involved in tech. So not too shabby for a used and broken, allegedly, motherboard. Now what you can probably immediately tell is that this motherboard probably isn't the highest of end. You've only got two RAM slots, one full size PCI slot, and some pretty basic VRMs. One thing to note that I am seeing right now is that A, there's no AMD backplate, which is actually quite important if you want to rest a stock cooler on it. Um, now that's okay because I have one personally, so I'll be fine, but you might not. And another thing to note is that there's no IO shield. Um, they must have lost that somewhere. I'm not sure about that. And there is no CMOS battery, which means you will have to source a replacement or some sort of substitute for those things. You don't need an IO shield, strictly speaking. It just makes it a lot nicer and neater looking and also stops dust from getting in. One other thing that I will note is actually the thermal paste that is on the CPU socket. Now, the arm still works, everything works as expected, except there is a lot of thermal paste on the socket. So I'm gonna go clean that right now. So overall, not a bad first impression. Okay, so in terms of the way that I'm gonna test things and set everything up, I've got my handy dandy Corsair CV550 that I use in my normal everyday build, my Ryzen 3 3100, a single eight gig stick of RAM, and my GTX 1650 that I no longer use. Now the reason I'm using this is I don't want everything that I actually currently use to break, um, so that limits it in that it can only break things that I don't typically use. Um, but I doubt it's gonna break anything. Okay, so I've currently got my little mini LCD display set up so that I can see if it outputs video hooked up to a power bank with the HDMI cable running into the GPU. And all that's left to do is short the power. So I'm gonna turn the power supply on and then see if this thing spins to life. There we go, it spins to life. Nothing's exploded yet. And I say yet, but it shouldn't explode. Now the display is definitely on, but what I am confused about is why I'm seeing nothing. That's quite interesting. I think I might just take it into my room and try on the monitor, because that might fix it. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. All right, well, I'll be back in just a second. Three, two, one, CPU fan spins to life, power supply fan spins to life. Will it come up on my monitor though? That is the ultimate question. Nothing happening yet. Not a great sign, but there is life. The GPU is getting warm, so it's getting power, and it's not looking good at the current point in time. So I'm gonna be upfront and honest with you, that really wasn't that much of a success. While yes, we did get the CPU fan and GPU fan to spin, it didn't actually post into the BIOS. Now, my suspicion is that the BIOS needs an update in order to work with Ryzen 3000 or later. Originally, I looked up the motherboard manual and found out that it supports Ryzen 1st, 2nd and 3rd gen, and Ryzen 1st gen with integrated graphics. Now, the seller actually said that they had a Ryzen 3 3200G, a 3rd gen CPU with integrated graphics, so I thought that it wouldn't be supported on the motherboard, hence why it wasn't working. 
Now despite saying that it supported Ryzen 3rd Gen without integrated graphics, my Ryzen 3 3100 didn't actually boot with it. So my suspicion is that it just needs a BIOS update and then it will be good to go. Because as you saw, the GPU was getting power, the CPU was getting power, the RAM was getting power, and the SSD was getting power. So I think that it really is just down to a BIOS update. So this is where my story ends for today. Now, while I didn't get it to work today, I'm going to buy a Ryzen 3 1200 or something similar of that CPU scale for a cheap amount of money and then try and update the BIOS from there to try and get it working once and for all. But for now, this is where it has to end. But there's another option. If one of you out there has a Ryzen 1000 series processor on hand that you're not using and you're happy to send it to me, I would gladly accept it and then I'd send it back after as I really just only need it to update the BIOS and don't really think I need to buy one. So yeah, motherboard's not working, but I have reason to suspect that it is not broken. So the verdict. Well, I actually think that it was a pretty good investment. It only cost me $30 in total with shipping included. So 30 Australian dollars, not that much money. And if I can get it working with a CPU, then I can easily sell it for more than I bought it for. I'm definitely convinced and I'm actually quite happy with my purchase, even though we didn't get it working today. That being said, should you buy a motherboard or other PC parts from eBay? Well, yes, I think you should, but you have to be careful of other things. For example, the AMD backplate was missing and the IO shield was missing. AMD backplate, I had one spare. IO shield, you can never really find a replacement for those, but it's not the end of the world. You don't need one, but it just helps make everything look nice. And eBay's money back guarantee is pretty good. However, if the listing does say that it's broken or for parts only, then you can't get your money back if it's a broken product. Just because, well, they said it was broken, so it should be assumed that it is broken and not working. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Subscribe to the channel. And as always, I'm TechBiz, and I'm out.